introduction to the memoirs of louis the fourteenth and his court and of the regency by the duke of saint simon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org introduction no library of court documents could pretend to be representative which ignored the famous memoirs of the duc de saint simon they stand by universal consent at the head of french historical papers and are the one great source from which all historians derive their insights into the closing years of the reign of the grand monarch louis the fourteenth whom the author shows to be anything but grand and of the regency the opinion of the french critic saint beuve is fairly typical with the memoirs of Deritz, it seems that perfection has been attained in interest in movement in moral analysis in pictorial vivacity and that there was no reason for expecting they could be surpassed but the memoirs of saint simon came and they offer merits which make them the most precious body of memoirs that as yet exist Villemain declared their author to be the most original of geniuses in French literature, the foremost of prose satirists, inexhaustible in details of manners and customs, a word painter like Tacitus, the author of a language of his own, lacking in accuracy, system, and art, yet an admirable writer. Leon Vallée reinforces this by saying, saint simon cannot be compared to any of his contemporaries he has an individuality a style and a language solely his own language he treated like an abject slave when he had gone to its furthest limit when it failed to express his ideas or feelings he forced it the result was a new term or a change in the ordinary meaning of words sprang forth from his pen with this was joined a vigor and breadth of style, very pronounced, which gave up the originality of the works of saint Simon and contributes toward placing their author in the foremost rank of French writers. Louis de Rouvroy, who later became Duke de saint Simon, was born in Paris, January 16, 1675. He claimed descent from Charlemagne, Yet the story goes that his father, as a young page of Louis the Thirteenth, gained favor with his royal master by his skill in holding the stirrup, and was finally made a duke and a peer of France. The boy, Louis, had no lesser persons than the king and queen Marie Therese as godparents, and made his first royal appearance at court when seventeen. He tells us that he was not a studious boy, but was fond of reading history and that if he had been given rein to read all he desired of it he might have made some figure in the world at nineteen like de Artagnan, he entered the king's musketeers at twenty he was made a captain in the cavalry and the same year he married the beautiful daughter of the maracol de largas this marriage which was purely political in its inception finally turned into a genuine love match a pleasant exception to the majority of such affairs he became devoted to his wife saying she exceeded all that was promised of her and all that i myself had hoped partly because of this marriage and also because he felt himself slighted in certain army appointments he resigned his position after five years service and retired for a time to private life upon his return to court taking up apartments which the royal favor had reserved for him at versailles saint simon secretly entered upon the self-appointed task for which he is now known to fame a task which the proud king of a vainglorious court would have lost no time in terminating had it been discovered the task of judge spy critic portraitist and historian rolled into one day by day henceforth for many years he was to set down upon his private memoirs the results of his personal observations supplemented by the gossip brought to him by his unsuspecting friends for neither courtier 
statesman minister nor friend ever looked upon those notes which this little duke with his cruel piercing unsatisfied eyes was so busily penning says Vallee, he filled a unique position at court being accepted by all even by the king himself as a cynic personally liked for his disposition enjoying consideration on account of the prestige of his social connections inspiring fear in the more timid by the severity and fearlessness of his criticism yet louis the fourteenth never seemed to have liked him and saint simon owed his influence chiefly to his friendly relations with the dauphin's family during the regency he tried to restrain the profligate duke of orleans and in return was offered the position of governor of the boy louis the fifteenth which he refused soon after he retired to private life and devoted his remaining years largely to revising his beloved memoirs the autograph manuscript still in existence reveals the immense labor which he put into it the writing is remarkable for its legibility and freedom from erasure it comprises no less than twenty three hundred pages in folio after the author's death in seventeen fifty five the secret of his lifelong labor were revealed and the duc de choiseul fearing the result of these frank revelations confiscated them and placed them among the state archives for sixty years they remained under lock and key being seen by only a few privileged persons among them marmontel duclos and voltaire a garbled version of extracts appeared in 1789, possibly being used as a revolutionary text. Finally, in 1819, a descendant of the analyst bearing the same name obtained permission from Louis XVIII to set this prisoner of the Bastille at liberty, and in 1829 an authoritative edition revised and arranged by chapters appeared it created a tremendous stir saint simon had been merciless from king down to lady's maid in depicting the daily life of a famous court he had stripped it of all its tinsel and pretension and laid the ragged framework bare he wrote like the devil for posterity exclaimed chateaubriand but the work at once became universally read and quoted both in france and england Macaulay made frequent use of it in his historical essays. It was, in a word, recognized as the chief authority upon an important period of thirty years, 1694 to 1723. Since then, it has passed through many editions, finally receiving an adequate English translation at the hands of Bale St. John, who had been careful to adhere to the peculiarities of St. Simone's style it is this version which is now presented in full giving us not only many vivid pictures of the author's time but of the author himself i do not pride myself upon my freedom from prejudice impartiality he confesses it would be useless to attempt it but i have tried at all times to tell the truth End of the introduction to the memoirs of Louis the Fourteenth in his court and of the Regency by the Duke of Saint Simon.